Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Auto Amateur and another episode in the series of Project 996. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the interior and seeing what we can do to get it back as close as possible to looking factory fresh. Let's go check it out. So another interior video. I have got parts from Gowden Porsche parts and eBay and Suncoast parts and Pelican parts just lining up across my workbench waiting to go into the project car. Now the transmission is already here, the engine will be here in a couple of weeks. So at the moment I'm just trying to keep myself busy doing a number of smaller jobs in parallel, trying to cut down the amount of time it's going to take for me to get this on the road so I can give it a good test run before taking it to the Rocky Mountains road tour that we're doing later on in May this year. You can find out more details about that on my website. But yes, the interior. Now, the seats aren't in there at the moment. They're at the upholsterers getting reconditioned. There are a number of panels on both seats that are being replaced. They're getting cleaned up. I can't wait to see what they look like when they come back. I'm also in the process of cleaning the carpet and reconditioning that and cleaning the, the, the leather seats in the back of the car. But I've got a number of other exciting things I'm going to be putting into it. Some completely not exciting and some really exciting. The less exciting ones, like new plastic trim. I'm going around the interior looking and saying, oh, $50, I can get myself a new rail cover or $50, I can get myself a new rail end cap and little things like that. We'll take a look at the interior in a minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, more to the other end of the spectrum, the more exciting end of the spectrum, I am doing the console delete in the middle to get rid of that useless uh, storage shelf at the bottom uh, and give big guys like me uh, more knee room. And I'm also gonna be installing deviated seat belts in the car. And that's what's gonna be the DIY part of this video. I'm gonna be putting in the blue seat belts that have just gotten back from max speed performance in Florida. I'm really excited to see what they look like. And in the DIY, I'm gonna talk through and show you how to remove the seat belts and then how to install the new ones. And we're gonna see the before and after, and I can't wait. So without further ado, let's get to it and get into the job. So let's start with the less exciting stuff. Here are the rail caps I was talking about that cover up the, the front and the back of the rails that the seats sit on. Relatively cheap. Uh, got those from Gowden Porsche Parts. They shipped in just a couple of days. This is a mod that I'm quite looking forward to. It's from extendmyseat.com. And essentially this sits underneath the factory seats and gives you this much extra leg room by making the rail sit further back and the seat fit, sit further back in the car. So you reuse the factory bolts. I think they go there maybe. Um, and then the seats just sit on top. That's gonna be cool. Extra leg room in the 996 for tall people like me, six foot six. That is like Christmas. And then here, I'm changing out the old and worn seat belt receptacles, which are now orange or even just white. They look they were, look really old, you know, 20 years old, like the car is now and cracked. So I've got the seatbelt receptacles, which need to go into the wiring harness there for the front seats. And then the rear seats, they're just simple bolt-ins. Um, these are really easy to replace. I've done these before, or at least I've taken them out and put them back in before. These also look relatively straightforward. Looks like one bolt, and then you just got to find the wiring harness. Now, I'm going to do 3,000 miles on the road. I am not doing that listening to FM radio in that 996. And I don't want to put an aftermarket head unit in there this time. I want to keep it stock. So what I've got here, which I found on eBay from a company out um, on the East Coast, they also have a regular storefronts. This just plugs in to the back of the existing PCM unit. Um, I think I've got the CD220 or something like that. Um, this plugs into the back of the PCM. I've got a power wire, I've got a ground wire, and then this gives me the ability to find a Bluetooth network and stream media and navigation directions, etc., from my phone through the AUX input into the car. So I'm not getting any video, but that's gonna be fantastic to break up the, uh, the journey and listen to podcasts and all that good thing. 
Uh, and then here I've got a replacement uh, e-brake. It's not brand new. Um, it was about $80 from eBay. Um, the lever needs a little bit of reconditioning, but not too much. But most importantly, it's got a button on the end so that I can actually use the brake, which my one currently doesn't have. Um, but other than that, you know, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. So I'll just clean that one up. I've got the, uh, the cap for the, for the, uh, for the front bumper, which is not technically an interior mod, of course. And then here we go. The most exciting part of this video and the interior jobs I'm doing at the moment, the deviated blue seat belts. I took out the factory seat belt harnesses and the receptacles here, or the, what are they called? Whatever they are, receptacles, let's just say they called that. Um, one from the left, one from the right, of course. Sent them to Max Speed Motorsports with the black webbing in, and they've essentially sent them back like magic with brand new blue webbing stitched to safety standards using all of the existing hardware and all of the existing um, components. So they're still factory seatbelts in a technical sense, apart from the wedding, uh, the webbing. And I can't wait to get that back into the car. So as good a condition as this car is in, uh, it's still 20 years old and it's still seen better days. I'm going to be getting the steering wheel uh, recovered um, and stitched with deviated blue to go with the, the steering wheel. And I'm also going to be doing the center tack face in a deviated blue color. And that's the only blue that's making it into the inside of the cabin. The rest of the dash is in pretty good condition, just needs a clean and a little bit of reconditioning. Uh, the gear shifter, I'm probably going to get this at least reconditioned. I think it's in good enough condition to keep Here's the center console, which is gonna be removed, essentially the two sides, these two trays, and then uh, the unit at the bottom. And then there's basically just a molded piece of carpet that goes there, so that gives me loads of extra knee room. Um, here, the center console, again, isn't in too bad condition. Um, from executive option, or exclusive option, I forget what it's called, um, where they do uh, specialized leather parts for Porsche cars and Lamborghinis and others. For a couple of hundred dollars, I can get a brand new uh, leather um, center console piece here with the deviated stitching to match the rest of the interior, which is actually this um, silver color, you know, just like the basic leather interior. That's one nice thing about this car is that it's got a lot of leather in it already. Um, but I'm going to replace that. This is okay here on the side. Um, this plastic uh, trim piece here is about $50. That can be easily replaced. Um, I'm probably going to do an ashtray delete, uh, and it also doesn't close properly, which uh, drives me crazy a little bit. Uh, you can see here the receptacles in the back. They really don't look great. They've seen better days. And considering they never get used, they are in terrible condition. Uh, the ones on the chairs at the front, the seats on the front are just equally bad. So a couple of things there that I can replace. Here you can see that I've already taken out the seat belts. Uh, so I'll be putting in the new seat belts shortly. But piece of leather trim here, new piece of trim here, um, recondition the gear shifter, do the center console delete, change the color of the tack face. Uh, and I'm now doing the 996 tack faces and the equivalent for the box to Caymans. Um, take off the steering wheel and go and get the leather reconditioned. Uh, sorry, you know, put over new, new leather. Uh, and then also here, the door sills. Um, the outer door sills aren't in too bad shape, but the inner door sills have had much better days. So this inner door cell here, um, sill is about $150. Uh, and then the one over there, which is in equally bad condition, this one over here is about $100. Uh, so that's not too much to get this interior looking spick and span. I've still got to clean and condition the carpet. It's, it's in okay condition, again, considering it's 20 years old. Um, I've already put brand new uh, all-weather uh, floor mats in here. I really don't like the fabric floor mats in cars. Uh, at least, you know, I can take those out and jet blast them and get them nice and clean. And then the door panels themselves, um, they need a good clean, but they're in pretty good condition. I think what I will replace will be uh, the map, um, the map compartment covers here, and certainly the little poles, which you can actually get in carbon fiber, didn't you know? That could be carbon fiber. This could be leather with matching deviated stitching here from the airbag panel. It actually feels like that's actually dented. So I think 
that needs to be replaced. So I'll get that replaced as well. The handles here aren't in too bad condition, um, but again, I'll see, I'll see uh, how my budget's working, but at least a couple of pieces for the interior and it's gonna start looking factory fresh. So here is where the fun begins. I'm just going to make sure I've got the seat out of the way before we get started. Uh, here's the belt, and obviously it's going to go back in here. Um, for the 996, you can see on either side they're labeled left and right. I don't remember that being the case for the 991, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but this obviously helps me figure out which side they go in. Um, they're going to sit like... This, I believe, what we're going to find out. There's a wiring connection here um, for the seatbelt sensor. So I'm going to put this in first and just uh, put the screw in loosely to hold it in place, put the bolt in and hold it in place. Then I'm going to thread the seatbelt um, around a, uh, a around a, a bar here, which keeps the seatbelt flush to the side of the car. I'm going to go up here, attach, and then let it drop down, and then finally attach this piece to the bottom. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna see me do the installation from that angle um, because I can only see through here. Um, but once I've got it all in place, then I'll come around and show you uh, what it looks like before we actually then seal up this uh, side panel. And I'm not taking this side panel all the way off because they are a pain to get off and they're an even bigger pain to put back on. So I've only got half the panel to worry about, which is fine because that gives me enough access in here. So I now have two bolts to put in. Um, this bolt, which I think is 17 mil, yeah, 17 millimeters, which is gonna go in the front. And then once I put this around the bar, I'm gonna show you in a second, there's another little bolt there, which I think is like nine millimeters. Let's have a look. 10 millimeters um, to keep the bar in place. And if you're putting on the steer, uh, if you're putting on seat belts, and you've you realize that you can't actually pull this up, and it feels like it's trapped, that's just because you don't have the seat belt sitting upright enough. It notices tilt, and if it tilts too much, then it locks the seat belt in place. Of course, you know, when, um, assuming that you're driving off the road, which is not the case, obviously here. Um, but uh, that that sort of stumped me at first. So put the seat belt receptacle in first. That's in there, nice and secure. Now I'm gonna feed it into or in through this holder. 
and I only took one of the, the nuts off there, one of the bolts off, because I didn't need to take both. And I'm just gonna hand tighten that as well. Okay, so now I have to bring the belt up. And the trick here is to bring the hardware through one piece at a time. <laughs> he says. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I've got enough length here. Put my drill on the seat belt so uh, it doesn't flick back. Uh, now I have to get one of the other 17 millimeter bolts and attach this up there. And one of the bolts has a little hole in the end, and that tells you that this goes at the top because it fits into this neatly. So uh, on this one originally, I did it the wrong way around, um, but now, thankfully, got it in the right place. So this one's gonna go in the top. You don't want to go too tight with this nut because you want this to give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of wiggle room as you're putting your belt on. So I'll tighten that up properly in a second. And then last but not least, the bolt on the bottom. This will pop back into place. Here we go. Now I'm gonna bring you around and we'll take a look inside. Okay, so let's take a look here behind the panel. You can see that the seatbelt receptacle is just sat there in its cradle and the wiring harness is connected just behind it. The bolt is at the front. So I did that first. And then here is the sidebar that keeps the belt in place. And I just removed this close nut to me here uh, so that I could slide the belt and the, the hardware through and then up here and then all the way down to the bottom. the video guys let me know what you think about the seat belts in the comments below or check me out on instagram as i continue to put up photos from all of the different jobs that i'm doing a couple more videos in the works actually that's a lie there are a load of videos in the works for this project 996 car all marching towards may where we're going to the rocky mountains to do a tour I have uh, a steering wheel being refurbished i've got the leather seats being restored uh, what else, what else, what else? I'm doing the center console delete. Uh, I'm gonna be adding a wireless Bluetooth uh, AUX input to the, uh, to the stock radio, um, several other jobs. Oh, and of course, let's not forget the transmission and the engine coming in uh, late February. So loads more content to come. Busy, busy, busy. I just can't wait to get this thing on the road. Thanks as ever for all your supports, all your comments, all the laughs and the giggles. Keep them coming, and I'll see you in another video or podcast soon. Bye.